Hi guys, I'm Laura Vitali, and on this episode of Laura in the Kitchen, I am answering a very popular request for, I'm going to say them wrong, but just bear with me, Brekala. And um, it's a traditional like Jewish cookie around this time of year, it's very popular, and I've gotten so many requests over the years to share my version with you, and I figured there's no better time than the present to share with you my version of these beauties. They are so good really easy to make, a total crowd pleaser, and you can really mix up the filling a million and one ways. I, today I'm gonna do a very kind of basic one that I, it's kind of like my go-to, which is gonna be sugary and cinnamony and delightful, but to get started, I just wanna share with you the ingredients you'll need to make the actual dough. Now for that, you'll need some all-purpose flour, I've got some granulated sugar and a pinch of salt, some cream cheese that's been softened at room temperature, unsalted butter that's been softened, and vanilla. That is it. Now you do need to plan a little bit ahead because the dough needs to chill in the fridge for a minimum of eight hours. I'm gonna pop it in there overnight because I feel like that's best, but hey, the world is your pickle, you do what you like. <laughs> but it does need quite a bit of time to set in the fridge. I'm gonna make this in my standing mixer, fit it with a paddle attachment, so without further ado, I bring to you these beauties. I'm going to take my cream cheese, like I said, it's been softened at room temperature, with my butter. My butter is really, really soft because I had it on top of the stove and my oven is on, so that's, it, it tends to just work out really well that way, but sometimes it, it melts around the edges just a little bit, but that's okay. I'm gonna bring this up and I'm gonna cream these together until they're combined. That's looking good. I'm just gonna add my vanilla. You'll want about two teaspoons of vanilla if I can get this open. Oh, there you go. I want a couple teaspoons of that. Get that mixed in. I'm gonna lower this down and scrape the sides of my bowl. Now, there are a million and one ways to make this recipe, so by no means take this as the authentic way. This is just my version of it. And I have seen that some recipes call for like a yeast dough, but most of them that I've seen or even tried, um, they, they use a like cream cheese base, which is what I use because I think it's absolutely to die for. I'm mixing my ingredients here, my dry ingredients, just briefly. I'm gonna add them right in, and then I'm just gonna mix these until everything is combined. I'm trying not to make a mess, but we both know that I can't really avoid that altogether, so. Actually, I did a really phenomenal job, if I do say so myself. <laughs> I'm just gonna mix these until they're combined, then the dough is done. Okay, my dough is done. Now, what I'm going to do, you can see this is a very sticky dough, so I don't wanna roll it out now, which is why it needs quite a bit of time to firm up in the fridge. What I'm going to do now is divide this as even as I possibly can master into four pieces, and then I'm gonna wrap each piece into some plastic wrap and pop it in the fridge. So let's see, that's about half and half, and that looks about right. So give them some plastic wrap. I'm gonna wrap each piece, pop it in the fridge overnight. Oh, and then I'll be ready to start rolling them and cutting them, filling them. I'm saying all of that completely backwards and then the order that it's gonna go, but you get the idea. So you just take a quarter. You can see it's very sticky, but it's perfect. Plunk it like so. Wrap this up. And this is ready for the fridge. Three more to go. And then I'm gonna get some beauty sleep. My dough was in the fridge overnight. Now a good tip is to make sure you take your dough out, your little discs, about an hour before you're ready to use them because they do need to, the dough needs to come to room temperature because otherwise it's hard as a rock. So make sure you don't forget that, otherwise if you just start rolling, it, you won't be able to. The filling, for the filling I should say, now remember this is my version of it and this is what I love. I love a mixture of brown sugar, cinnamon, granulated sugar, some chopped up walnuts, and some apricot preserves. Now some people put in raisins, and I sometimes do and sometimes don't, it totally depends on my mood. Today I'm gonna skip out on the raisins, but you can if you want to. Now you wanna make sure that your surface, and I also have some egg wash ready, is really well floured because this is a very sticky, buttery dough. And I just take one circle at a time, one of the discs at a time, and roll this out into about, I would say into like a nine inch circle. 
make sure it's nice and even and you can see I'm just moving it around moving it around you don't want this to be too thick but you don't want this to be too thin and you want to keep it in a round shape if you can help it okay make sure you brush off any extra flour now I'm gonna just mix this together I'm gonna mix everything together and like I said this is just my version on like a classic filling classic sugary cinnamony filling but I tell you I fill these with so many different things you can fill them with chocolate chips you can fill them with just one kind of cookie you can fill them with almonds I mean you name it this just happens to be what for me just smells like cozy perfection now I take a little bit of my preserves and you don't need a lot of this and it probably does help if you pop it into the microwave for just a couple of minutes to loosen this up a bit and if your preserves have a lot of really big chunks you might want to puree it mine doesn't mine has kind of smaller chunks and uh, I'm only gonna make half a batch today and do the rest tomorrow because I'm gonna bring them to the nursery so that's why I don't have a whole lot out but this is good you don't need it from absolutely every inch to every inch you know from every little piece and then you take some of your filling a handful of that scatter this over and the preserves also almost acts like glue so what am I going to do now and if you don't like walnuts you can certainly substitute them but I like them you can see I'm leaving a border I'm leaving an edge and then you just take your hands and you just press this press the filling down and then taking a pizza cutter you're going to cut this into 12 little triangles little pizza shapes so I'll just do it like that okay and then you try to get three triangles out of each one so and then you take your little triangles and then kind of like a croissant just try to roll them as tight as you can manage just roll them like so and put them on your baking sheet as you can see some are bigger than others but hey the day someone comes over and judges me for the sizes of my cookies is a day I'm gonna question our friendship because we all know I'm not very I'm not very precise kind of person and just just roll with it just roll with it okay I'm gonna continue to do these two more and then all I'm gonna do you want to make sure at this point your oven is preheated to 350 degrees and then I'm going to brush the tops of these with some egg wash you don't have to but I do like the color that it gives the cookies so I'm just gonna brush the tops with a little egg wash which is just an egg beaten with a little bit of water milk cream whatever you got and then brush them like so and now I'm going to pop these into the oven that has been preheated at 350 for about 20-25 minutes or until they're a beautiful golden brown color. They could take a little more time, a little less, depending on your oven. And then all I'm going to do is make another tray and then I will save the remaining filling and dough for tomorrow. So I'm going to pop these in and show you what they look like when they are done. These babies were in the oven for about 25 minutes and as you can see they look beautiful. Now what I have done is when they come out of the oven, sugar caramelizes around the edges and it can stick. I did use parchment paper but what I like to do is when they come out of the oven let them sit for just a couple of minutes to kind of cool down a bit and then remove them to a cooling rack to kind of cool completely. And I just took out the cutest ones to show you how how adorable. I mean really. It's like it's like and I'll, I mean, I'm going to show you the inside. <laughs> Too excited. They're beautiful. Look at that. Mmm. Crunchy. Sweet. That dough is so, like, pillowy soft. Mmm. They are. Phenomenal. If you have your own version of these, please let me know what you'd like to put in them. I'm like so involved right now with this cookie. I always love seeing your own takes on things and I just think that that's what makes a recipe really unique. So share with us down below your favorite variation. Go to LaraInTheKitchen.com to get this recipe. I hope you've enjoyed spending time with me and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.